This is The Hill, an Italian-American neighborhood in St. Louis. Along with its famous restaurants, bistros, and bakeries, it's known for its strong Sicilian identity. These homes have housed generation after generation of Italian immigrants going back to the 19th century. Today, about two-thirds of the residents are still Italian, and they've managed to maintain a sense of identity and interdependence. I remember my father talking about growing up in Chicago with all the different ethnic neighborhoods. And the one thing he spoke most about was knowing who your neighbors were. If his mom needed a babysitter, all she had to do was walk next door. If his father lost his job and needed help, he would turn to his neighbors. Everyone in the neighborhood depended upon one another for survival. Today, how many people know who their neighbors are? How many can rely upon someone else beyond themselves when they are in need? My father never knew it, but as a kid, his family benefited from the Catholic Church's social principle of subsidiarity. Theologians have defined subsidiarity as a way of thinking about the ideal of responsiveness in the social order. The principle is very simple. Every segment of society should take responsibility for itself. But when the lowest level cannot provide for itself, then it goes to a higher level. We can look to the family as the basic structure. The parents are to provide for the needs of the children. But when they face a crisis, or they do not have the necessary resources, then they turn to their immediate community, their neighborhood. When the neighborhood can no longer provide for them, then they turn to a larger authority, and so on. Put simply, ask for what you need when you need it, give when asked, and don't spoil yourself. Subsidiarity calls upon individuals to be responsible for themselves and to leave space for charity, which is crucial for civilization. Pope Benedict XVI has spoken numerous times of the role of subsidiarity in society. He says that subsidiarity respects personal dignity by recognizing in the person a subject who is always capable of giving something to others. By considering reciprocity as the heart of what it is to be a human being, subsidiarity is the most effective antidote against any form of all-encompassing welfare state. In other words, humans are social beings, and it is through cooperation that society flourishes. If people took better care of their immediate community, then there would be less need for overarching policies that might not get to the heart of the problem. Subsidiarity also has a global dimension, for it is particularly well suited to managing globalization and directing it towards authentic human development. In fact, the church calls nations to allow subsidiarity to govern how they foster and utilize globalization. Globalization requires authority, but this authority must be organized in such a way that does not infringe upon the freedom and human flourishing of the nations. We already have an example of subsidiarity in the generations of immigrants that came before us. Now we need to expand our understanding of community to encompass the needs of those outside our homes.